I grew up in the fashion industry. Uh, my family was in the industry and worked in the garment center. So I always grew up with a love of fashion and love clothing, love knowing about what was going on in the industry. Uh, many years later, after a long and varied career, uh, winning a contest out of college for Mademoiselle Magazine, becoming a guest editor, uh, to being a fashion director at a department store, having my own public relations firm, uh, working in the architecture and interiors world, I came back to fashion um, as director of the Council of Fashion Designers of America um, in 1991. Michael Kors had a show that week in an empty loft space down in the 20s. And uh, when he turned the bass music on, the, everything in those spaces shake when the music goes on, it's so loud. And uh, he, he turned the music on, the models were walking up and down the runway. It was the days of Naomi, Cindy, Linda, the one named Supermodels. And the ceiling began to collapse, uh, just from the, the pressure of the bass music and plaster came down on the runway on all those supermodel shoulders. They kept walking. And having just been hired to be the director of the CFDA, I said, I think my job description just changed. And it did. And I proceeded to spend the next year looking for empty spaces in New York where we could conceivably um, house fashion shows and or tent locations or wherever we could do something. India was a place that I fell in love with, so I wound up spending you know, 10 years of my time going back and forth for Fashion Week in Mumbai, which was a marvelous experience to see how that industry grew. And the model looks very much like, this, like New York or Paris or anywhere else in the world. There's the paparazzi, who are crazy, running around like, like lunatics. There are the models, who are gorgeous in India. Uh, there are the designers, who are doing absolutely beautiful clothing. I mean, wonderful, wonderful uh, garments. The only difference I would say to people when I go to Mumbai is if you look out in the audience, you don't see any blonde people. All of them are friends and colleagues, and um, some I spend more time with than others. But I mean, I have a great, I have a great rapport and respect for the designers, and always have, and and I think the feeling's mutual which makes for very nice interviews. But I ask very personal questions, and I don't really ask about their this collection versus that collection and their inspiration for that or that. It's really, who are they? What are they about? What turns them on? What make, made them who they are? And for many people in the audience to learn about the ins and outs and the ups and downs. I mean, the triumphs and the failures. Every one of them had bankruptcies or had closed businesses, you know, had to find money, had to persevere. Nobody becomes a success overnight. It's not an easy road in this industry. You know, I'm not sure anybody really knows what's in fashion anymore, you know, and what really is out there, you know, what to buy. And, uh, I, you know, that's actually quite frankly why I'm, I, I'm very fond of what Mrs. Obama's doing. You know, she's focusing attention on fashion in a way that nobody else is. And she's generating a lot of good business and she's, selecting interesting designers and bringing the, them to a level of prominence that's unheard of. Well, I mean, I think Alex Wang, I think a lot of people will be watching him again more co closely because of the Balenciaga appointment. Um, I think that uh, people will be crazed to get into Jason Wu again, now uh, having done the second inaugural gown. I hope more people will want to see Reed Krakow's collection because I think it's, it's fabulous and a lot of people don't give him the respect that, that he deserves. Um, Tom Brown's show is going to be also over, over the moon. But then I love going to the younger designers who I can you know, assist and try and see, give them some boosts and push them along. A young designer like Brandon Sun or Bipu Mohapatra, who I'm very fond of. It's the whole uh, Derek Lamb, you know, generation, and Proenza Schooler, and um, Rag and Bone, and, and I mean, there's a whole culture of really young, up-and-coming talent who are really making, making the waves and making a difference. <laughs>